Hey everyone, welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. Today I'll be making this cute, whimsical scarecrow door hanger as part of the Heidi Sambol DIY Fall Challenge. I'm sure you're all familiar with Heidi. If you're not, be sure to check her out because she's absolutely amazing. You'll find links to Heidi's channel as well as the playlist of all the talented creators participating in the description box below. Let's get into it. I had this rando piece of MDF lying around in my basement. So with my scroll saw, I've cut out my scarecrow shape. Doesn't look like much right now, but with a little paint and some embellishments, we'll get there. I've also cut a dovetail notch in this shim that I'll use for his hat brim. With a pencil, I'm marking where his hat ends and his face begins. I'll start by painting his body with ceram coat acrylic paint and waterfall. Now that his body is dry, I'll mix some folk art glazing medium and Ceram Coat Williamsburg Blue on my plate, just using my brush to mix it together. I'm using a cheapy chip brush to apply the glaze, using long, light vertical strokes. And then I'll stroke horizontally. I want this to look like denim, so I'm trying to mimic the weave. I'll repeat that technique, this time using Ceram Coat Buttercream and the glaze. And I'm applying it with my dirty brush. I am using a clean brush to mix the glaze though, but my dirty brush to apply. I'm hoping this will simulate, you know how the white thread is visible through the indigo of a warm pair of jeans. Looking good so far. The next layer will be ceram coat ink blot and the glaze. This time I'm using a wider brush to apply the glaze. And then I'll use my chip brush horizontally and vertically to give that thread texture. And I'll do this the length of the body. I'll base coat his face with Americana Sun Bleached. Along the neckline, I'll paint some fringe to make it look like his face is a fabric sack and is cinched at the neck. Down here near the bottom, I'll add some swirls with the sun bleached, because why not? His hat and brim will be ceram coat jute.
I'm taping off the line between his hat and his face so I can use this stencil to add some checks to his hat. Once I get it lined up how I like it, I'll tape the stencil to the body so it doesn't shift while painting. I'm using Ceram Coat Sand Dune, which I'll pants on with a cosmetic sponge. I'll use a smaller version of the stencil on the brim. I'm going to place my brim in position so I can gauge where I want his nose to go, but I won't glue it on until later. I'm using an orange pencil to draw it before painting. I'll fill it in with Ceram Coat Bittersweet Orange. For his cheeks, I'm using both jute and sand dune. So, I'll load my brush with sand dune, and then I'll side load both corners with jute. This adds my shading and my cheek color in one go. I'll wipe some of the paint from the brush so I can dry brush the cheeks. Then, I'll reload the corners of my brush with the jute. I'll add his eyes and mouth with burnt umber. Using a liner brush, I'll give him teardrop shaped eyes. and X's for his mouth. And I'll give him some eyebrows too. Then some stitch lines along his nose. I'm using Americana Oyster Beige and Float Medium to shade his face. I dip my brush into the floating medium, working it into my bristles. Then I side load the paint on one corner of my brush and stroke that back and forth on my plate to load my brush. I'll shade the face by keeping the paint corner of my brush to the edge of my piece, reloading as necessary. And I'll shade just above the fringe and along the top of his face too. With a smaller brush, I'll shade along the outside of his nose and along his eyes. And now I'll use sand dune to strengthen the shading. So basically, I'm just hitting the same spots that I did before. I'm adding weak curved lines like parentheses above the fringe to give it a puckered look. With Ceram Coat Amber Glow, I'll add thin 
diagonal lines to his nose. Just to add a wee bit of interest. I'll float the inside of his nose with Americana Burnt Orange. Americana Mississippi Mud will shade his hat and brim. And I'll shade his body with ink blot. This is a really pretty, deep, rich blue. I'm using a smaller brush again to make the curved strokes for the puckered cinch. I'm dotting highlights in his eyes with sun bleach. With Ceram Coat Burnt Umber, I'll dry brush the edges to grunge them up a bit. And, you know, I'll give him some random grunge here and there. I have these gardening gloves that I'll be using as his hands, and I'm going to grunge them up a bit also with burn umber. Bittersweet Orange will base coat this wee side. I'm using loose sparse strokes to paint this. I want some of the raw material to peek through. And again, I'll dry brush the edges with Burnt Umber. So, I've got a bunch of raffia here. I'll twist the chenille stem around it about five inches or so from the top, making a small bundle. And then I'll cut away the excess. I make two bundles and I'll set them aside for the moment. With some wood glue and some hot glue, I'll attach the brim to his hat. And I'll attach his we sign. Next, I'll wrap some jute around his neck and I'll tie it in a bow right at the cinch line.
Now I can glue his gloves in place. I've penciled in Born Dance Tonight onto his sign. And I'll paint it in with burnt umber. Then I lightly sand it. I glued the gloves down in the back, including the thumbs. And I'll glue my raffia bundles in place, one at the bottom and one at the top center of his hat. I'm adding some twine around the bottom where my painted cinch line is, no bow this time. Cut three different ribbons a few inches long and I'll distress them with some ink. I'm just rubbing my ink pad all along my ribbon. And I'll dovetail them. Then I stack them and I'll twist a chenille stem around the center of them. Then I tie some twine around the center to hide the stem. I tie it in the back and cut off the excess. I twist three stems of pip berries together at their center. Add a dollop of hot glue, then I'll tie on my bow. I'm wrapping my berry stems around a skewer to give them a little bit of curl. And I'll glue my bow just above the brim of the hat. Next, I'll drill two holes on either side of the top of the hat. I've cut a length of craft wire, about 14 inches, and I'll push it through the holes, and with pliers, I'll curl the wire around itself. And as always, I'll spray the entire piece with the matte sealer. It's been a while since I made a scarecrow, but I think he turned out kind of cute. I want to thank Heidi for hosting this challenge. You'll find the link to her channel in my description box, and that's where you'll find the playlist link as well. Please be sure to check out all the other creators. You won't be disappointed. If you haven't already and you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. As always, stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.